So today we're going to talk about the so-called replacement theorem. But before I jump into what this theorem says, let me recall two definitions that are going to be important. So the first definition is the definition of a basis. Um, a tuple of vectors in the vector space V is called a basis if and only if it spans the vector space and it is linearly independent. And secondly, um, let us remember this definition of the dimension. We said um, a vector space is finite dimensional if and only if it's a span of a finite tuple. And then in this case, we want to attach the dimension to the vector space. And we said that this should be the number of elements in a basis. So last time we saw already that if you have a finite spanning set, you definitely do find a basis. So you can define this dimension. And so today the goal is to answer the second question we had. Well, in order for this to be well defined, we have to have that um, the dimension should not depend on the choice of a basis. So no matter what base you pick, you should always get the same number. So meaning the size of a basis of the vector space should always be the same. And for this, let's go to this uh, theorem here. Oh, I can't move it. Ah, there you go. The replacement theorem. Um, what does it say? Um, let's start out here. We have a vector space over R. We take two natural numbers, m and n, and we take two tuples, one of the length m and one of length n. And now we suppose the first tuple is linearly independent and the second tuple spans. Okay. So you have one linearly independent tuple and another one that spans. Well, in this case, you always want to show that the linearly independent set cannot exceed the spanning set. And this is uh, what I started to talk about last time, is that a maximal linearly independent pet set should be spanning. Yeah? But if it's smaller than that, it cannot be spanning. And then a minimal spanning set is linearly independent. So this is somewhat the, the tension between the two of them. And so in particular, a linearly independent set cannot be larger than a spanning set. Because in order for a linearly independent set to be spanning, it has to be maximal. Um, and then secondly, is that now in this case, we can pick n minus n many vectors from the second tuple um, and attach it to the first in order to get a spanning set of V. So first, this doesn't really look like what does it even have to do with um, showing that a basis is um, the size of the basis does not depend on the choice, but this will be a corollary of this replacement theorem. But this is a stronger result that is very useful in many ways, and we'll see corollaries either at the end of this lecture or beginning of next lecture. So let's go to the proof. Um, last week in the TA session, you should have started to talk about proof by induction. And so in this case, this we want to prove also by induction. It might be a little bit more complicated induction than what you've seen so far. Um, so what can we do here? We have two natural numbers, so we could potentially induct on either of them. Um, and what we're going to do is we fix one of them. So we fix n and m, so a natural number n, and prove this statement by mathematical induction on m. On M. Okay, so let us go over what, how do we prove something by induction. Okay, so first of all, the only way you can prove something by induction is if the, if the statement has say something for all natural numbers or something like that. And what you do is um, you do it in two steps. First, you establish a base case. So you show that the statement holds for an initial case m equals, let's say, i. Usually i is like 0 or 1, but there's certain cases where things start to be true at, at 2 or 3 or 4. Yeah. Um, so this depends on the case you're in, but what you usually see, especially in this lecture, is like 
a base case is zero or one. The second part is the inductive step. So you assume that the statement holds for an M and then you want to show that it holds for M plus one. And in this case, yeah, you start at the base case then, since you, let's say the base case is one, um, then you have that it's true for equal I, M equals one. And then, well, since you show that if it's true for one, then it should also be true for one plus one, two. And then since it's true for two, it also has to be equal to two plus one, three. And so then you can make your way up to all natural numbers. Um, and there's some like modifications to this. Sometimes in the inductive step, you don't only use that the statement holds for, uh, um, for, for the particular number m, but for all numbers smaller than the one you're interested in. Okay, so let's start with our base case. And in this case, um, our base case starts as m equals zero. Um, and we have that our n is a natural number. So that means that then m is definitely less or equal than n because zero is less or equal than any natural number. Uh, and then now, uh, what, what does it mean for the statement here? If m is, if m is zero, then, well, this is an empty tuple. And then you can just basically in the second thing here, well, you're going to have to pick n vectors from w1 through wn, so you can just pick all of them. Yeah? So usually the base case is rather simple. Um, and we can just pick all of the vectors that w1 through wn. Okay. Now let's go to, in, to the inductive step. So I usually abbreviate it by is. So now suppose the IH induction hypothesis holds for some m in the natural numbers or being zero. Yeah, and the given n. We want to show uh, the induction uh, that the statement that we want to show theorem holds for well n plus one and the given n yeah so the n doesn't go up at all the n is fixed okay um so what we want to do here is now in an induction step is well we have to use um that the statement is true one step before so how can we do that here well first of all we have to in order to apply anything of this theorem we have to first find um, a tuple of length m that is linearly independent. And so what we're doing is we're going to just cut the tuple short. Um, right, so um, in this case, let us uh, let w1 through w and v1 through vm plus 1 be linearly independent. Then by theorem, Uh, what was it? 5, 11, 1. Um, if I shorten this tuple, it'd still be linearly independent. So theorem 5, 11, 1 just say, said that any subtuple, any shorter tuple is uh, linearly independent if the big one is. Um, v1 through v, uh, v is linearly independent. Okay, and now we can apply the induction hypothesis um, to this tuple. Then, by induction hypothesis applied to v1, vn, and w1 through wm, we have that, well, uh, sorry. Mm. Sorry. 
we have the m here well let's go go back to here what we have we have m is less or equal than n and we can pick n minus m vectors from this tuple to make it spanning so m is definitely sorry <coughs> less or equal than n and we can pick w um uh, k1 through wk n minus m um, vectors from w1 through w n such that okay first we have the v's and then we have the wk1 through k n minus m spans v great okay um now we have to bring this vector vm plus one back into the picture yeah so what do we want to do well we want to replace and this is where the name comes one we want to replace one of oops sorry wrong pencil uh, we want to replace one of these by vm plus one and then we won yeah because if we replace one of these by vm plus one then up to reordering we have that vn up to v oh this should be an m here up to vm plus one and these extra vectors from w from the from the tuple given by the w's spans v okay so how can we do that um well, this spans V, so any element in V can be written as a linear combination. In particular, this vector Vm plus 1 can be written as a linear combination. So Vm plus 1 is in the span of V1 through Vm, Wk1 through Wkn minus M. Uh, in particular, There are lambda 1 through lambda m, comma, mu m through mu n minus m, such that, well, v m plus 1 is actually equal to lambda 1 v 1 all the way up to lambda m v m plus mu 1 w k 1 plus mu n minus m w k n minus m. Great. So we got until here. Um, and so the next idea is, well, we do want to replace one of the wi's by vm plus one. So what we want to do is we're going to look at this equation up here and we're going to kind of reorder. So what, do, what does this express? This express the m plus 1 here can be written as a linear combinations of the others. But up to reordering, like maybe taking one of the vi's here, or actually this is not the one I want, I probably would like it to be the last one. I can reorder, put this over here, and then put this guy back here. Yeah, In a, in a way that then um, the wkn minus 1 is actually in the span of the others. So that's the idea. Yeah, this is the idea. Now we have to argue that we can actually do that. Okay, so. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, and how does we do we do that? Uh, so now as w v1 until vm plus 1 is linearly independent by assumption, What do I get? Well, we have that the last one cannot be in the span of the ones before. Oops, v. Yeah, because if it would be in the span, then by, let me look up the number theorem, 5.12, that is equivalent for the tuple to be linearly dependent. Okay, so, so far so good. 
Um, and let's put that together. Now look back at this equation up here. Now we do have that Vn plus 1 can be written as this linear combination. So first of all, well, we know that we have to have something back here. Because if you wouldn't have anything back here, then let's remove it. Well, I cannot, usually I would put my hand in front. I can't because I can't Im imitate my hand. Uh, but just like if you remove this uh, part that is circled green, then what do you get? Well, you would get that Vn plus 1 is actually in a linear combination of the first m many, which you can't because it's not in the span. So that means something here has to be. And in this case, that means n minus n minus m, this, this index back here, has to be greater than 0. OK. OK, and this means that m is actually greater or equal than m plus 1. This is the first part of the theorem. Yeah, If you look back, I don't want to scroll up because it makes you nausea, nausea maybe. Uh, the first part of the theorems, we want to show that, oh, sorry, uh, m plus 1. This is <laughs> not what I wanted to say. m plus 1 is greater or equal to n. So actually, let me go in more details. It means m is uh, is less what am i writing i don't know sorry sorry for all i don't know what i just erased uh, and maybe i did the wrong implication let me just repeat what i really wanted to say what i really wanted to say is that this implies m is less than n okay and this is something that you can always have in the natural numbers if m is strictly less than m well then m plus one is less or equal than n yeah because if i have a natural number that is strictly less than n and if I add 1 to it, well, it could be equal to n, but it cannot be uh, more above. If this implication causes you some trouble, please feel free to ask me in the lecture, and I can say so, uh, a little more about it. Okay, this is the first part. So now we have n plus 1 is less or equal to n. And so now the, the second part is we have to pick these elements. Okay. Um, mm. And yeah, so uh, so this is the first part of uh, the first implication that this here hold, uh, gives you. The second part is also, well, not only do you have to have possible something here, also one of these um, mu i's, they cannot all be zero out of the same argument, yeah? And uh, not all mu i's can be zero. And then without loss of generation, we may assume mu n minus m is different from zero. Yeah, and so, well, we could, for, for example, we order them or something like that. We know one is not zero. Let's just pick it to be the last one. Yeah? If it was something in between, well, exchange the role of this and the last one and you're good. Okay. And so now the claim is, and this will finish what we want to do, is that um, v1 through vn, vn plus 1, and now um, the first many here, w, oops, wk n minus m minus 1 spans v. Yeah. And this finishes the proof at the end. Uh, and see again, like now here, we're really replacing the last element in in this tuple up here by Vm. And see, so this is where the name comes from. Okay, now proof of the claim. As v is equal to the span of v1 through v m wk1 wk n minus m, um, we want to show that actually this span, and let me call 
uh, give this a name. So let's call this tuple here alpha. The whole tuple, yeah. And let's call this tuple alpha prime. I do that so to um, to ease notation. That span of this first tuple alpha is going to be included in the span of alpha prime. Yeah. And this now gives us yeah that then V will be in the span of alpha prime, which is precisely what we want. And then how do we do that? Now by theorem 5, 3, it is enough to show that alpha is indeed a subset of the span. Remember this theorem 5, Point three said that um, the span of alpha is the smallest subspace that contains alpha. Since the span of alpha prime is also a subspace, if it contains alpha, it must contain the span. So this is another time where we use this tool that we uh, proved beforehand. Okay. Now, let's look. They don't really differ that much from each other. Yeah, We have that uh, we just replaced w k n minus m by w uh, v m plus one. So well, we immediately have that v n all the way up to v m um, w k one w k n minus m minus one is a subset of the span of alpha prime so it's left to show that this last element is inside Okay, but let's go back to this equality here. Yeah. So now, since we know, and I've already colored in so much here, but I hope you can still follow, we know that this guy here is non zero by assumption. So, what we do is we're going to do this exchangement. Yeah. So now we take star by star, we get that. Okay, so we put W, K, N minus 1 on the left, and we uh, divide by minus mu N minus M. Uh, and then we get, uh, what do you have? Lambda 1, V1, plus all the way up to 1 over minus mu N minus M, lambda, uh, lambda M, v sorry v m um plus <laughs> one over mu n minus m v m plus one yeah so we put minus v m minus one to the other side plus one over minus mu m minus m sorry uh times mu one w k one all the way up to to oof one over minus mu m minus n times mu n minus m minus one times uh, w k n minus m minus n one sorry for all the indices but this is true which witnesses that WKN minus M is indeed in the span of alpha prime. Um, this finishes the proof of the fin, oops, too much writing. This finishes the proof of the claim and thus the proof of the theorem. Okay, and this has already been a long enough lecture, so I'll leave all the corollaries for next time. Bye-bye.